Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first lesson through our online YouTube channel that we'll be doing for the month of April. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our morning math talk, just like how we would start every day here at school. So what I want you to do while you're at home is to sing along with our songs, think about the answers to the questions, and if you have a piece of paper and maybe a pencil or a pen, you can write down the answers and do the problems with us as we go. So I think that'd be something really great for us to do. So if you want to pause the video really fast, go get a piece of paper, go get something to write with, and then um, click play when you am ready, and we can get started with our morning math talk. So if you guys remember from school, the first thing that we do for our morning math talk is our money song. So for the money song, I would like you to sing along with me and do our hand motions um, as we go. So here we go. So how much is a penny? How much is a nickel? How much is a dime? How much is a quarter? A penny is one. A nickel is five. A dime is ten. A quarter is twenty-five. Okay, so I hope you guys were singing along with me so that I wasn't the only one doing it by myself. But next, we're going to move on to greater than or less than. So the way that this is going to work, it's going to be a little differently since you guys are not here for me to call on you. So I'm just going to say a question. I'm going to give a couple second pause where you guys could tell your parents the answers or you could write it down or you could just say it out loud to yourself and then you'll check with me to see if you're right. So our first question is, what does the word greater than mean? So if you told someone the right answer, here it is. So it's greater than means the number is bigger than the other number. So now we'll move on to less than. What does less than mean? Less than means the number is smaller than the other number. And our last one is equal to. What does it mean if a number is equal to another number? So we know equal means the two numbers are the same. And we use the equal sign to show that. How do we know um, which number our alligator will eat in a problem? So take a second, tell someone the answer, write it down. So we know the alligator always wants to eat the bigger number. So here's now where you're going to have to do some work with me. I'm going to write a problem on my board, and you're going to have to write a problem on a board that you have or on a piece of paper, and we're going to have to check to see if we got it right. So here we go. So we'll start by doing 45, and we have our little answer bubble, and we have 65. So I'd like you to write this problem down so that... Um, you could check with me when we're done if you got the answer correct. So I'll give you one second to write it down, draw your answer, and then we'll check with each other. So here we go. So we know that we said the alligator always eats the bigger number, so we have 45 and 65. So, the, so we know that the alligator will want to eat the 65. And the way that we'll read it in a sentence is we'll always start on the left side. We'll say 45 is less than 65. So there is our greater than or less than problem for today. Okay, the next part of our math talk that we're going to move on to is our place value. And if you can see behind me on my board, I have our base 10 blocks, which is what we're going to use to um, solve our place value problems. So we know we have our one cubes, which is just the one block. We have our 10 sticks. 10 stick, which shows 10, and our last one is our 100 block, and that stands for having 100. So what we're going to do is I'm going to draw my 100 blocks, 10 sticks, and my 1s, and then you're going to have to draw it on your paper and count up how many it has all together. So after I draw the problem, if you need to pause it to draw it out to solve the answer, and then click play again to see if you are right to check with me. So here we go. So our problem for today... So there is our problem for today. So I'd like you to draw this problem down, just the black one. The yellow one's just the picture. So I'd like you to um, copy down what I drew with my black marker. And then I would like you to solve and write your answer down here in the corner about how many it has all together. So you could take a second to pause the video. And then when you click play again, I'm going to have my answer ready. 
So if we count it up, we have two 100 blocks, which makes 200. We have one, two, three, four 10 sticks, which is where we count by 10. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40. And then we have to count our ones. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six ones. So we have 200, 40, and six. So when we put it all together to find out how many we have all together, we have 246. And that is our answer. Okay, next for double digit addition, I want you to think in your head right now, what does it mean if a number is double digit? So we know that if a number is double digit, that means it has two parts to the number. So I'm not sure how well you could see this, but my example problem for my double digit addition, I'll write it a little bit bigger. So it is 24 plus 31 equals. So we know we have um, each number has two parts to it. So it is a double digit problem. So I want you to write down this problem on your piece of paper right now. You can pause the video and I want you to do our strategy that we know to do to help us with this kind of problem. And when you click play, when you click play again, it'll have our problem up here on the board. So we know with our strategy, we could put a line right through the middle to help us make the problem a little bit easier. So now my problem, I have four plus one, which we know is five. And we have two plus three, which we know is also five. So now that I know 24 plus 31 equals 55. So since I had this problem already up there, I want to do one more over here on the side. So after I write it down, I want you to click pause and then you can write it down too and solve it by yourself. So we'll do 62 plus 24. So take a minute, use our strategy and find the answer to the problem. When you click play again, we'll be ready to get going and solve it together. So here we go. So I'm gonna put my line down my middle and now I have two plus four. So I know if I start at the bigger number, which is four, count on two times, I have four, five, six. So two plus four is six. And if I have six plus two, I could start at six, count on two times, say six, seven, eight. So six plus two equals eight. So now I know 62, or 62 plus 24 equals 86. So the next part of our math talk is our fractions. And I know every time we talk about fractions, we always talk about how Mr. Morel's, Mr. Morel goes and gets pizza with his mom on Mondays. Sadly, since we all have been at home, I've not been able to go get pizza as much. So I've been having some pizza here at my house. So for our fraction today, I'm still gonna have my pizza. And as we do this, you could draw it with me and then try to write down your answer um, before I have it done. So if you need to pause to do that, like I said, you can. So I'm gonna get my slices. And then for my pizza today, I am gonna put some, let's do pieces of chocolate on my pizza today. So we have little Hershey Kisses on my slices of pizza. So now, if you need to pause the video to draw your pizza, draw your Hershey Kisses, you can. We're gonna have to figure out our fraction by looking at how many pieces have Hershey, Hershey Kisses, how many don't, and how many we have all together. So here we go. We'll draw our fraction line right in the middle, and we always start with our bottom number. So I want you to think in your head, what number is gonna go at the bottom of this fraction? So you either say the answer out loud or you can write it down. And we know when we need to find the bottom number, we count up how many pieces of pizza we have all together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all together there's eight pieces, so eight will go at the bottom. Next, our top number, we're gonna look at how many pieces have Hershey Kisses. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So five pieces had Hershey Kisses. So now that when we read our fraction, we always start at the top, so we would say five, and when we get to the line, we say out of five, out of eight, had Hershey Kisses. Very good. Next, we have our time questions. So I'm gonna ask the question, you could either tell someone the answer, you could say it out loud to yourself, or you could write it down. So let's start with how many seconds are in one minute? So we know we have 60 seconds in one minute. How many minutes do we have in one hour? 
we have 60 minutes in one hour. And now how many hours do we have in one day? So we know we have 24 hours in one day. That's the one that changes. Next, we have how many days in a week? We have seven days in a week. And then how many days do we have in a year? So remember, this is the bigger number. So in one year, we have 365 days. How many months do we have in a year? So we have 12 months in the year, and right now we are in the month of April. And then when we look at a clock, do we look at the big hand first, or do we look at the small hand? So we know when we look at a clock, we always look at the small hand first, and that tells us the hours, and then the big hand tells us the minutes. So on my clock behind me, I'm gonna draw a time, and then I want you to tell whoever you're with, or if you're by yourself, to say it out loud, what time is showing on my clock. So I'm gonna draw my small hand my first, and then my big hand. Okay, so if you can see that I drew my small hand and my big hand, we have the small hand at the two, and we have the big hand at the six. So you can either tell someone what time it is, you can write it down, or you can do both. So if you take a second to do that, and we know that the small hand first tells us is two, and the big hand's at the six, we know it's 30. So we have two, 30. That is the time showing on my clock. And with your time, you either have AM or PM, we know AM always tells us it is the morning, and PM tells us it is afternoon or it is nighttime. All right, we're back. So I hope everyone can, can see me well. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to some story time. So the book that I picked for us today is Horton Hears a Who. So if you have not read this book before, it is an awesome book written by Dr. Seuss. So we're gonna read this book today, and I just want you to follow along with me and just think about what's going on in the book, think about where they are, what they're doing, and, and just enjoy, since we have not had story time in a while. So here we go, Horton Hears a Who. And I hope everyone can, can see it the best that we can. This is what we'll have to work with. So here we go. On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. So who do you think he heard? We're gonna have to find out. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked toward the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yelp, and if some tiny person was calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton, but who are you? Where? He looked and he looked, and he could see nothing there but a small speck of dust blowing past the air. I say, murmured Horton, I've never heard I've never heard tell of a smack or a speck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? Why I think there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust. Some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. So right next to Horton, there's a little teeny tiny little speck that is yelling at Horton, and he is very confused about it. Some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow in the pool and he has nowhere to steer. I'll just have to save him because after all, a person's a person no matter how small. So gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched his great trunk through the air and he lifted a little speck of dust and carried it over and placed it down safe, very soft on a clover. 
So he set him very carefully right on this little clover. Nice little home for him. Humph! Humped a voice. "'Twas a sour kangaroo!' And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, "'Humph!' Two. "'Why, that speck is as small as the head of a pin. A person on that, why, there's never been!' Are these kangaroos being very nice to the little guy on the speck of dust? I don't think so. It sounds like they're coming in and they're making fun of him because he's so small, which we know is not very nice. Believe me, said Horton, I tell you sincerely, my ears are quite keen and I heard him quite clearly. I know there's a person down there, and what's more, quite likely there's two, even three, even four. Quite likely, a family for all that we know. A family with children starting to grow. So please, Horton said, as a favor to me, try not to disturb them, just let them be. So Horton had to tell the kangaroos that he is able to hear the guys on the little speck of dust because he has really good hearing. And he says there could be a whole family on that little speck of dust, not just one guy. I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo. Make a face on how you would feel if someone called you that. I would be so upset. Make a very sad face if someone called me that. And I bet that Horton did not feel very well after being called that. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. You're the biggest blame fool in the jungle of Newell. And the kangaroos plunged in the cool pool. What terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So he plucked up the clover and he hustled away. Through the high jungle treetops, the news spread quickly. He talks to a dust speck. He's out of his head. Just look at him walk with that speck on that flower. And Horton walked, worrying, almost for an hour. Should I put this speck down? Horton thought with alarm. If I do, the small persons may come and get great harm. I can't put it down, and I won't. After all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Then, Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint, he could barely hear it. Speak up, please said Horton. He put his ear near it. My friend, came the voice. You're a very fine friend. You've helped us all, f you've helped all us folks on this dust speck to no end. You've saved our houses, our ceilings, and our floors. You've saved all of our churches and our grocery stores. So there was someone on there. Horton did hear him, and he was saying thank you for protecting them. You mean... <gasps> Horton gasped. You have buildings there, too? Oh, yes, piped the voice. We most certainly do. I know, called the voice. I'm too small to be seen, but I'm the mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. Our buildings to you would seem terribly small, but to us, who aren't big, they are wonderfully tall. My town is called Whoville, for I am a who. And we Whos are all thankful and grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town. You're safe now. Don't worry. I won't let you down. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, three big jungle monkeys climbed up Horton's neck. The Wickersham brothers came shouting. What rot! This elephant's talking to who's who are not. They aren't any who's, and they don't have any mayor. We're going to stop all this nonsense. So, there. Now the monkeys are coming to be mean too. They're trying to grab the little speck from Horton. They snatched Horton's clover. They carried it off to a black-bottomed eagle named Vlad Vladikov. A mighty strong eagle, a very soft swing, a very soft wing. And they said, will you kindly get rid of this thing? And before the poor elephant could even speak, that eagle flew off 
with a flower in his beak. All that late afternoon and far into the night, that black bottom bird flapped his wings in fast flight. While Horton chased after with groans over stones that tattered his toenails and battered his bones and begged, please don't harm my little folks who have so much right to, or have, who have as much right to live as us bigger folks do. But far, far beyond him, that eagle kept flapping and over his shoulder called back, Quit your yapping. I'll fly that night through. I'm a bird. I don't mind it. And I'll hide this tomorrow where you'll never find it. And at 6.56, the next morning, he did it. It sure was a terrible place that he hid it. He let that small clover drop somewhere inside of a great patch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Find that, sneered the bird, but I think you'll fail. And he left with a flip of his black-bottomed tail. So the, the bird put the clover in this huge patch of all hundreds of other clovers. So he said, Horton, it'll get lost in there. You'll never be able to find your clover. I'll find it, cried Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on that small speck of dust. And clover by clover, by clover with care, he picked up and searched them and called, Are you there? But clover by clover by clover he found that the one that he sought for was just not around. And by noon, poor old Horton, more dead than alive, had picked, searched, and piled up 9,005. So he already looked through 9,000 clovers and couldn't find the one with his friends on it. Then, on through the afternoon, hour by hour, till he found them at last on the three millionth flower. My friends, cried the elephant, tell me, do tell. Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? So Horton's really making sure that he and his friends are all okay now that he found them. From down on the speck came the voice of the mayor. We've really had trouble, much more than our share. When the black bottom birdie let go and we dropped, we landed so hard that our clocks have stopped. Our teapots are broken, our rocking chairs smashed, and our bicycle tires all blew up when we crashed. So Horton, please, pleaded that voice of the mayors, will you stick by us who's while we're making repairs? Of course, Horton answered, of course I'll stick. I'll stick by you small folks through thin and through thick. So right now I want you to think of a time that you were, um, you were really there for someone when they needed help. So think of a time when a friend really needed your help and you made sure that you stuck with them and um, you helped them out. So I want you to tell whoever you're with right now or write it down. Tell me about a time that you really helped out a friend. And when you're done, you can click play again or you can just keep listening while you write. <sighs> Humped a voice. For almost two days you've run wild and insisted on chatting with persons who've never existed. Such carryings on in our peaceable jungle, we've had quite enough of your blowing bungle. And I'm here to state, snapped the big kangaroo, that your silly non-school game is all through. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too! With the help of the Wickersham brothers and dozens of Wickersham uncles and Wickersham cousins and Wickersham in laws, whose help I've engaged, you're going to be roped, and you're going to be caged, and as for your dust speck, ha, that we shall boil in a hot steaming kettle of bezel nut oil. Boil it, gasped Horton. Oh, you can't do. It's a full of persons, and they'll prove it to you. So all the other animals still don't believe Horton, that he hears the little people on the dust. So they said they're going to put Horton in jail, and they're going to burn the little clover. I can't believe that. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Horton called. Mr. Mayor, you've got to prove now that you really are there. So call a big meeting. Get everyone out. Make every who holler. Make every who shout. 
Make every who scream. If you don't, every who is going to end up in Beazle Nut Stew. So now Horton is telling the mayor, hey, listen, you got to get everyone to yell so that my re these real animals up here can hear you. Because they're not happy. And down on the dust speck, the scared little mayor quick called a big meeting in Whoville Town Square. And his people cried loudly. They cried out in fear. We are here. We are here. We are here. So they're all over the city, all screaming so that the people outside of the dust speck can hear them. The elephant smiled. That was clear as a bell. You kangaroos surely had heard that very well. All I heard, snapped the big kangaroo, was the breeze and the faint sound of wind through the far distant trees. I heard no voices, and you didn't either. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me neither. Kangaroo still couldn't hear him, though. Grab him, they shouted, and the big cage opened. Lasso his stomach with ten miles of rope, tie the knot so tight he'll never shake loose. Then dunk that speck in bezel nut juice. Horton fought back with great vigor and vim, but the Wickersham gang was too many for him. They beat him, they mauled him, and they started to haul him into his cage. But he managed to call to the mayor, Don't give up, I believe in you all. A person's a person, no matter how small. And you make, or, and you very small persons will not have to die if you make yourselves heard, so come on now and try. The mayor grabbed a tom-tom. He started to smack it. And all over Whoville they whapped up a racket. They rattled it in tin kettles, and they beat on pans, a garbage pail tops, and old cranberry cans. They blew, up, they blew on bazookas and blasted great toots on clarinets, oompas, and boompas, and flutes. So they were finding everything they could to try to make as much noise as they can so that they could be heard. Great gusts of loud racket rang high through the air. They rattled and shook the whole sky. And the mayor called up through the howling, mad hula-baloo. Hey, Horton, how's this? Is your sound coming through? And Horton called back, I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't as strong quite as mine. They don't hear a thing. Are you sure all your boys are doing their best? Are they all making noise? Are you sure every who down in Whoville is working? Quick, look through your town. Is anyone shirking? Through the town rushed the mayor, from the east to the west, but everyone seemed to be doing his best. Everyone seemed to be yapping or yipping, everyone seemed to be bipping, beeping or bipping. But it wasn't enough. All the ruckus and roar, he had to find someone to help him make more. He raced through each building and searched floor to floor. So here's the mayor looking through every building to try to find one more person to help them yell. And just as he felt he was getting nowhere, and almost about to give up in despair, he suddenly burst through a door and that mayor discovered one shirker, quite hidden away, in the Fairfax Apartments, apartment 12J. A very small, small shirker named Jojo was standing, just standing, and bouncing a yo-yo. Not making a sound, not a yip, not a chirp. And the mayor rushed inside and he grabbed the young twerp. He's like, let's go. We gotta make some noise, buddy. And he climbed with the lad up the Eiffelberg Tower. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour. The time for all who's who have blood that is red to come to the aid of their country, he said. We've got to make noises in greater amounts. So open your mouth, lad, far for every voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed. When they got to the top, the lad cleared his throat and shouted, Yup. And that yop, that one small yop, extra yop, put it over the top. Finally, at last, from that speck on that clover, their voices were heard. They rang loud and clear and clean. And the elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? They've proved they are persons no matter how small, and their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true, yes, how true, said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm planning to do? 
From now on, I'm going to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, what do you think the young kangaroo said? Me too. From sun in the summer, from rain when it is fallish, I'm going to protect them no matter how smallish. The end. So what a great book. So what I want you to do right now is take a second to think about who were the two, there's actually a couple characters in the book. So think about the, I want you to think about who were the characters in the book, and then I want you to think about the setting. So where were they? So you could either write it down, you could tell someone, or you can um, just think about it in your head. So who was in the book, who were the characters, and where was the setting? So where were they?